Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm glad you're here this morning. Welcome to the show. I'm Winston Chester, and I'm tickled every morning to bring it to you. Sometimes I'm more tickled than others as we try to plan our weekends. I'm right, Jeff doing his countdown. So wait a minute, I got to get my plan tomorrow because I want to fish bad tomorrow. And, it's, and of course, what's the weather going to do? It's going to be going to be cold. High today, 54, and low is 34. And water temperature. Check this out. Water temperature is 64 degrees. And do I have some news for you in the fishing report? You're going to keep watching. I've got some some breaking news on the fishing scene, but we'll cover it later. The river reading. Looking at Apalachicola, Blountstown, 20.9, 21 foot, and it, it's up there, folks. And the Choctaw Caribou, it's still at 11 foot. It's going up. I want to just show you this right here. Y'all see that? I wrote I wrote point one. Can y'all see right here? I wrote point one. This was a river reading on the Choctahatchee, and I saved this, and this was on October 6th of 2019, last fall, the Choctahatchee was point one. Is that not a testimonial as to how, as to how our river's bumping down in the fall and the winter, and we have dry falls and a lot of rain in the winter, so that was the Choctahatchee River this morning. It's at, uh, what did I say, 11 foot. So anyway, I just get a kick out of stuff like that. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Again, low tide in the morning, 5.56 and high at 758. We've got that north wind. It's going to be cold and might be some fires throughout the panhandle tonight in the old fireplace or outside at some little bonfires and marshmallow roast. And that's how you do it. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We have some fascinating pictures to look at this morning. We're going to start off with one that's fascinating. This is right here locally. This, this is a wild hog. Hey, Coach Chester, I just wanted to let you know about this big boar I shot last night, 190 pounds. Shot him with a 30 6 just off of Wild Heron on the beach. Now, folks, that's local right there. Thanks for teaching me to love and appreciate the outdoors. Brady Barton, my class of 2013. And I'm going to read you. I, I was fascinated with this. I'm going to read you the story, basically, because... Uh, I, I, this, that's just unusual. You know, it's right off the beach there and the hair and everything on it. So, uh, that coach, we, I, I texted him back. So he sent me the story. We were on, we were on my father-in-law's lease behind the conservation park on the west end of the beach by Wild Heron. We all know where that is. So you see how animals can just get all over the place and get close to civilization. We've been hunting all season for a nice buck we've only seen them after dark. We noticed about 13 hogs coming out almost every night, tearing up our corn. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? So after, after sitting about three hours, we decided to wait a few more minutes. And in case the hogs came out about 6.05, they all came rushing out at once. And that's what they do. They don't come creeping out. Sometimes they just fly out. This is a great story. And then uh, the big, and I saw this big light colored one we had seen on the camera side of that one. So I shot him with a browning. Uh, bow tracks and 30 off six right behind his shoulder. He dropped flat. I've only started, listen to this, I've only started hunting this year, but I'm hooked. And I don't want to put a smile on your face. Hopefully I'll get a buck this year, but we just have to wait and see. And went on to tell me he works for Tenor Credit Union and got married in October 2018 and living out there. And he said, I'm teaching her all the good stuff you taught us in class, talking about his wife, on how to tie knots and throw cast nets and fishing from, from the shore for Pompano. She loves the outdoors just as much as I do. So that's a great story. That's one of the heartwarming story, stories. He took time to go hunting and uh, look what's going on. So let's get on through these pictures. All right, now let's go from the Panama City Beach. This particular picture is out there in Texas. This is not a local picture. This is a fascinating nonetheless. One of our my Facebook friends had it on. And you can see we've shown pictures like this on occasion where a big fish just gets choked and uh, sometimes, and, and he, you see what had happened. He, he had a, he caught him in another fish. That's just uh, unusual. Okay, and then this is a hog. Here's a couple more pictures of the hog. Okay, I want to just, he's excited about it, and he should be. And there's a 30 all six, good shot. That's a good gun right there. All right, here's another story. Old Ben Steele up there at Seven Oaks Hunt Club sent this to Sandra Todd. Finally got her buck after a long time in the stand. Congratulations, Sandra. She's hunted hard. Everybody, of course, Ben had to get, he had to, uh, 
Photoshop and get there in the, in the picture and photobomb it. And uh, anyway, Sandy, good Sandy is what they call her, but she was waited very patient. And, and there she is again. That's a nice buck right there. Uh, hard work. Okay, I want to, uh, let me, I will come back to this one. Let me show a couple more. Here's ben, Ben's brother, Jeff, of the Seven Oaks. They've had a good year up there, the Seven Oaks Hunt Club. That's Jeff still. All right, good job, Jeff. And then you got to put up all this, they had a hunt camp, so all these, they have all ribbing each other. And then what happens, the brothers get back in a fight. And <laughs> they're always saying, well, my buck's bigger than your buck. But listen, but that's a fun group of guys up there. All right, then, uh, I do have this one too, Jeff. Uh, when husbands are sent to the grocery store, this ought to hit home. Gail got a kid. I showed this to Gail. She said, you need to show that because this is what you do all the time. I said, honey, did you say bread or milk? I can't remember. So you all know what I'm talking about. Tom Gurley. This is right here locally at San Andrew State Park. Is that not beautiful? And that's a protected one. And that's going. he's going to keep on uh, uh, being here with us. Okay. Now I wanted to, let me go back to this one. Uh, let's say I had a couple more. Okay, this, uh, I got a message on email from one of the viewers. I'm going to read it to you because this is interesting to all of us. Uh, this is from Jeff. Uh, Thanks for the daily shows. I'm new to the area, and it's nice to get information and advice. We have so many new people coming in who want to learn. Okay, in the future, uh, I'll like to see what type of fishing equipment you use and the rigs and all that. I lived in Colorado for most of my life, so the fishing was completely different. Yeah, from out there uh, to here would be different. And since I'm new to this area, are there any fishing groups or clubs that I could join to learn more about local fishing? Thank you for the, thank you so much. And thanks for the station for having a show on each day of the week. We need, uh, if uh, I'm, the Bent Rod Fishing Club up in Phoenix Springs is the only club still active and that's, they do a lot of freshwater and saltwater fishing. But that's in the Phoenix. We used to have a speckled trout, a speckled trout club here. Uh, and they'd meet on Monday nights. We talked about them. In fact, I put them in my book. But as far as fishing clubs, the Panama City Kayak Fishing Association is active. You can check Sun Jam or Brad Stevens, and there's just different groups on Facebook page. There are two or three Facebook pages on Panama City Fishing, and it's just really good stuff. So just hook up with those people, and I can promise you, uh, you, you can learn a lot of good stuff on that. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. Let me add a couple of names here to our pickle jar. We're looking at Stan Bright. We're going to add your name in here. And also, we're going to add Ramona Bright. Okay, we got that done. And speaking of the, uh, you know, ask for feedback on whether we should keep the, the interest, and once we pull the interest, whether to keep it out or put it back in the box. And 100% of the viewers that responded said we should keep it out to give everybody a chance. So that's, we're going to keep it all out. And uh, here's the stack winners we've already gotten, so I'm going to keep you all in the clip. If you won, you're in a clip right here. Okay, now, I love, on this show, I love doing things, uh, trying to keep things fresh and do things different I've never done before. And this is going to be sort of unique here. I'm going to, I'm going to make an announcement in, in my 15th year. I've never done anything like this on, on Panhandle Outdoors. And, but I wanted to make an announcement. I want to let, let you folks know uh, that uh, Winston Chester is be running for school board here in Bay County for District 4. And I'm just, I'm just going to really show you what I put on Facebook and had a little press conference. Basically, uh, on, on what I did, I said, uh, I'm just going to read it to you because this is how I feel. Uh, all, all my life, I, I wanted to help young people. For 44 years, I was able to do that as a teacher and coach. Now I have the opportunity to continue helping our students by running for Bay County School Board District 4. I'd appreciate your prayers, support, and vote. Any way you would like to help, please let me know. So I posted these. I tried to find out some pictures. This was, uh, so I'm going to just show you a couple pictures I posted. Uh, that was a picture there. And then this was a picture. I thought this was a good one because it was a typical one of the students brought a boat. I said, man, your boat's nicer than my boat. But he brought it. We just went over all the parts of a boat. And you'd be surprised at the young people that don't know the, you know, the stern and the bow and, and the, port, <laughs> the port and starboard and those kind of things. And then this is this one of my favorite pictures, not because of me, but it's because of the classroom and the students. I, I remember those students there, but you can see our classroom. We had originally started inside the school, but we made so much noise, the principal uh, <laughs> bought us a, a portable and put us outside, which is ideal for us. So this is a portable uh, outside, and it actually stood up there in Category 5 Herrick, and that portable is still standing. And this was our classroom. And then it's outside, and this is a typical look at some of them climbing around, some of them listening, and some of them daydreaming. Is that, is that not typical? 
But anyway, and I just wanted to, uh, to let folks know and, and let you know in the viewing audience, uh, the show will go on. I promise you, I, I, people got some of the first things people ask me, if, if I win, I'm, it's going to go on if I win or lose, okay? So don't worry about that. And I told them, you know, I did a show 11 years, uh, coming here early in the morning and doing a show and then going to teach it all day. So Panhandle Outdoors will will continue as long as the good Lord is willing. So we plan to, uh, to do it. Now here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show this one time now. This is this is my sign, my daughter Wendy, y'all know her, she actually designed it for me. So we have, we have the yard signs and then some bigger signs. So hopefully you see those around. And then we did we did some T-shirts, okay. And there's a the T-shirt, it's the same as the sign, but on the back with my coach background, I had them put team because we got a you know it's a team effort. And anything I've ever done in my life to be successful, it was a team effort. So that's that's the store there. I have all kind of I, I've been to school board meetings, been around all my life, and I just I feel very strong about our, helping our young people. And y'all know what, where we're coming from. And we're going to have students of the month on coming Monday, and we do that once a week. But there's just a lot of young people that continue to, to need good guidance. And, and I, not just as a school board member, all of us need to do this in your own way. I know, I know Jeff Peck, he spends a good time uh, uh, volunteering for Special Olympics. All these little things we do, every little thing we do to help our young people. And I was talking to someone the other day, and you know, he said, you know, back in our day, quote, 75% of the kids learn a lot of stuff, learn most of their manners and everything at home, or 80, 80 or 90% of them. And then the other 10%, we sort of help them out at school. And now it's almost the opposite way around. He said a lot of, a lot of family units are not together. The kids are sort of, he used the term wild, but they just don't learn a lot. And it's just, we just have such a responsibility to try to help them and guide them and push them along the way. And so I, I want to continue doing that. And that's where I'm coming from with that situation. I'm not going to politic on the, on the show. We may have a commercial or something later on, but I just wanted to, I think most of y'all know how I feel about this kind of stuff and all. So to celebrate that, we're going to give away Mr. Tracker Box. See, everybody's happy. All right? And Gail has been by my side and everything I've done. And, and this has been an exciting journey. Already. We're just kicking off. It's been very exciting and humbling. At, that's a word I haven't been able to use much in my life. I've been humble uh, in the last couple of weeks when I'm getting, getting out there. So it's just, I, I feel very blessed. The winner of the Mr. Tackle Box, let's look at, let's see what's in it first. It's like a, it's like a mystery. Let me see. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. We got, uh, I always get some decals, okay? Cute decals. Ooh. From, from Castor. Check it out. They, they call this one a, a dying jerk, okay? I won't make any jokes about that, but all right, all right, check this one out from our Z-Man folks. Z-Man, what a great company. Z-Man right here, that, I'll guarantee you this will catch fish, all right? And also, Big Bite Baits, that's the folks up there in Ufall, Alabama, they're good. And I want to win this one. And another one, Z-Man, okay? The Scented Jerk Shad, that's got a scent to it. That's, this is a good box of stuff right here, okay? Let me see what I can put in my pocket over here. That's kidding. All right, here we go. Uh, and a winner is going to be, uh, the Mr. Tackle Box is going to be all the way from Southport. How about Terry Richards? <laughs> Terry Richards, I'll have to do a disclaimer there. Terry's my neighbor, so Terry, I, I may even bring it home to me after I take my good ones out of there. Good job. All right, now, I want to give uh, on, on these. Remember yesterday we had uh, the folks on with this uh, wood, uh, what do they call it, wood? They call it actually the Wheels and Water Show. The Wheels and Water Show. And what I'm going to do, instead of drawing, I got uh, quite a few tickets give, they gave us to give away to you. Instead of drawing the names out of here, I think what we'll do, if you'll call me and I'll put your name down, you can come out of the studio and pick up a pair. Okay, $20 a piece, but. I know if I draw some names, all of y'all don't want to go to that, but a lot of, some of y'all do, so we're just going to select it this way, and, and Jeff and, and uh, be here, and Donna will be here, and we'll go ahead and uh, I have them here on my desk, and I'll put two, and when you call me, I'll put your name on them, okay? Let's do that that way. All right, now, we still got to draw for Tarpon Dock. All right, now, let's go to the $20. The $20 gift certificate is going to go to Rebecca. Harris from Greenhead. Congratulations, Rebecca, for twenty dollars. Shawna, you gonna come on in and be on the show? I got. You, I'm on live right now. If you'll come on in. Okay, I can't get Shawna to come on. We're gonna take the camera in the office one day. 
Okay, here we go. The winner of the Big Red Snapper was going to be Ethan Walding. So we've got all kind of happy people this morning, all the stuff we've given away, and this has been exciting. So we're going to write all this down and make sure that uh, you get your fair share. So let's go ahead and take our break. We're going to come back with a famous Friday fishing forecast. All right, welcome back, folks. Let's start looking at our fishing forecast. We base our fishing forecast on the results we've had this week, and man, have we had some kind of results. We're looking at, we're looking at, uh, I've got a page full of stuff, and I'm gonna start, we're gonna start, I'm gonna zoom in. We're out here at the beach, cause we're gonna zoom in to the pier, okay? We're gonna find a pier somewhere, there it is. Check it out, and I'm gonna see the beach pier. All right, I'm gonna leave that up a second, because I wanna, I wanna talk about the report here. I, I call Carrie on a regular basis, and Carrie, uh, Carrie is, is very. Carrie works at the pier every day, so he knows exactly what we're talking about when we want to report. And the first day, when he called, he said, "Hey, Winston," I said, "Hey, Carrie, hey, Carrie, what's going on?" He said one word. Are you ready, Pompano? I said, "You got to be kidding." He said, "No." He said, "He said, okay, here's the, here's the, what happened." He said, "Monday." They caught about 20 pompano. Ned Maxwell, are you listening? They caught about 20 pompano off the pier Monday. Tuesday, one guy, I, I know his name, but I'm not gonna call out his name on the air, but I know he is a good fisherman. He limited, he, got, he caught 10. He got over his limit and uh, released some, but he caught 10. It's just been a steady bite all week. And we got this cold weather coming in right now, so it's, <laughs> you know, you should have been there yesterday, but that's a classic case, but now listen, they were still hanging around. But, you know, I've tracked this water temperature, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier, the water temperature this morning, it, it did jump up to 64. And, you know, we preach this all the time about the water temperature, and sure enough, you know, it had gone down to 62, remember last week, but it started coming back up, and it started coming back up on Valentine's Day, Monday, is when they started catching them. So it was really a, a fine catch of pumping. I said, okay, what else? He said, Spanish have started coming in. They're very, he said, on the little side, there's not a lot of them. These are what we call the scouts. They're sort of bouncing around. But the Spanish, there are going to be some Spanish caught. Uh, maybe not, not a lot tomorrow, but next week when this cold front gets through here and then warms back up next week, we're going to hear some good Spanish macro reports from throughout the base system. It's just, it's inevitable that by the Spanish, and uh, it's, going to be, it's, it's going to be some good catches next week. Sheephead. So it's been very good on sheephead. I know from the jetties, talking to the folks at the jetties, they caught some. The big thing about fishing the jetties, you're gonna get hung up. You're gonna get hung up a lot. So the uh, the jetties are still are still productive, but you gotta know how to fish them. Okay. All right. So now uh, the other thing you he, he brought out, uh, it's been. It's, I said uh, we'll talk. We'll talk a good while. Uh, he keeps a record, and uh, I said, look at your records. I said, well, would this be a uh, this time of year, the middle of February, he said, yes, Winston, it's been an early bite. It's been a, usually the last couple of days of February into March is when all of this is happening. Of course, sheephead or, or, or the middle of March, but he said, Pompano, this has been real early for Pompano, and we had predicted that, if you remember. So it's been an early bite, and it's been a, it's been a, uh, he said it was a happy Valentine's Day for a lot of guys. Okay, Larry Brown, I got his report here, and uh, he said, Larry sent a good report, some brim being bought, being, being caught, and some, some bass are being caught, but also the speck of trout has been steady, but not a lot of them are coming out of the Choctahatchee Bay and Choctahatchee River. Larry, been on top of things over there. So it's, it's been a steady bite. Now, the next thing I wanted to cover, I want to make sure we cover, I wrote down redfish because this was, this, I got fascinate, fascinated with this one. Uh, the, the redfish report, you got to keep me in my position here. I get a, a text over here, I get a report over here, I get a call over here from different people fishing and I just sort of get tickled because I can follow them around. I know exactly what's going on. I get jealous sometimes too because I need to be there too. But there's a school of redfish the last, about the last two weeks. There's been a big school of redfish in West Bay. And I could almost, I, I could almost track them from the reports I was getting. They, they were coming in here. I'm gonna just put in the center, uh, center of the, uh, right here in the center. They came in here, uh, coming from the bridge. They hung the left shoreline there and went on up into, okay, into West Bay. That says Grand Lagoon, but that's, this is West Bay. So they're caught along, I'm gonna keep everything in the center. The first couple of reports were sort of caught all along the center here. And then what they did, they crossed over a crooked, out, a crooked Creek and Burnt Mill Creek. There were some catches there. Then the same school, I'm talking about this is in, within a week and a half. 
They caught them off the point here, and then they caught some up here in North Bay. I, I got reports from different people, and then some back down in here uh, around, around the bridge. So that big school was active, and it, they were around, and it was exciting to me because I knew what was going on. That was last week during that, that warm spurt we had all the way on up through Valentine's Day. But what's even more humorous is a good buddy of mine called, and he, he wanted me to, he called me Friday afternoon. He said, I've got, I got him located. He said, I gotta go, I'm sorry, he called me Thursday afternoon. He said, let's go for tomorrow afternoon. And I had a volleyball tournament in Tampa. So I said, I don't think I can make it. Well, he said, Winston, he said, we got him located. Well, I called him back, I called him back Friday night to just see how he did. And he, was in, he wasn't in a good mood because they were not there. <laughs> and, it, and they were exactly the day before, they were right there on top of them, but they went back the next day and they were not there. So anyway, that's how the redfish are. That's where a lot of fish are. You know that with bass and all, but that, you keep in mind how they move around and they're just going to be, uh, that's the fun of fishing, going out there and catching them like that. Real quick, uh, I know some folks are going to try surf fishing. I may, I still may go tomorrow even cold weather. I may go. I just, I, I, can't, I can't stand it. I got to go. Uh, and I'll let y'all know, and of course, St. Joe Bay, I will try to find out what's going on in St. Joe Bay. I'm gonna try to go down there maybe tomorrow morning or tonight, maybe. Um, in fact, I may go after the show. Uh, we gotta wrap it up. Thank y'all for watching. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching Pan Outdoors. Uh, always appreciate the viewership, appreciate your loyalty and, and the time you spend with our sponsors and uh, they keep us on the air and all. So you make sure you have a great weekend. It'll be a little bit cooler. It may cool things off, but it's still gonna be a good weekend to get out and enjoy yourself in the great outdoors. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.